fellow explorers, the old saying of your choice of hotel can make or break your vacation is totally true. And you can have a good hotel, but if they practice some of these 21 way too common hotel practices, your vacation can be absolutely ruined. Now, these are some of the things I hate when I go to hotels. I know these are all some of the things that you hate when you go to hotels because I have heard them from you. In addition to sharing some of the things that break a hotel, I'm gonna share some of the things that I really like in hotels as a professional hotel reviewer that spent over a thousand nights in hotels. Let me tell you, I know a thing or two about what makes a hotel good and what makes a hotel bad. All right, so the first way too common hotel practice that can totally ruin your stay is resort fees, destination fees. I'm gonna go ahead and call these nuisance fees and junk fees because they're absolutely junk. They're a nuisance, especially when you thought the room was $100 and then you find out there's a $50 resort fee. And I feel like when you check in the hotels and they give you the sheet that talks about all of the things the resort free gives you, to me, that almost adds insult to injury because I look at that list and I'm like, that was all the stuff that just I used to get for free in my room rate. And now, now you're charging me resort fee and I, again, I used to get those things. I don't feel like I'm getting new things. And so I know I hate resort and destination fees and I lower the rating of hotels when they charge resort and destination fees. All right, let's go to number two, which is noisy rooms. Uh, noisy rooms are awful. You know, one of the things I really like when I go to a hotel is I like the room to be quiet so that I can sleep in it. And if the room is not quiet and it's noisy, like, what? why am I paying money for a room that I can't sleep in? The worst rooms are the rooms next to the elevator, right above the nightclub, connecting rooms, and you know, what I know a lot of you hate and what's totally ruined your stay are hotels that have doors that close super loud. Who designs those doors? You've all been in those kinds of hotels. The doors sound like a, it's like a, I don't know, like a, like a door to a prison cell that's closing and then you're lying in the bed and all you can hear are doors all night. I hate it. Now me, uh, I try to alleviate this problem of noisy rooms by whenever I check in at the front desk, I say, hey, could you please give me a quiet room? I'm a light sleeper. And you know what? It's funny. Sometimes they still give me the room next to the elevator. And if I walk up to the floor and I've got the room next to the elevator, I don't even go back. I don't even go in. I just turn right back around down the elevator, down to the lobby, and I say, I'm sorry. I asked for a quiet room and uh, my room next to the elevator. <laughs> not not going to be quiet. Um, so comment in the live chat. Uh, Vetug says rooms below the gym. That's awful too, especially if you hear people and they're running on the treadmill or they're putting down um, weights. Kangas Conrad says, my apartment had doors like that in Irvine. Yeah, they're awful. And I know they make those doors that close, loud, close loudly so that they actually close, but come on, let's make it a soft closed door. Uh, Yoshi says, I like to ask for a high floor room so it's much quieter. That's a good tip as well. And Justin says, yeah, when those doors are so loud, it makes me feel like a a-hole just for opening the door. I know, and I'm one of those people, I don't let the door slam. I like turn the handle and I close it quietly like everybody else should do but you know what there's some doors it doesn't even matter if you do that they are still uh, way way too noisy the third practice the hotels do that can ruin your stay is not having adequate heating or air conditioning uh, the first problem in addition to these things just not working uh, more likely is they're noisy I, I don't know who decides to put in air conditioners that are rated at the level of a jet engine, but I've been in some rooms that it's just so loud, I can't hear myself think over the air conditioner, let alone make a video review of the actual room. Also, air conditioning that starts and stops. If you've got the jet engine air conditioner and it starts and stops all night, how can you sleep when you're going from jet engine to quiet and then you decide to turn it off, but then there's no airflow in the room and it's stuffy and you're like, well, I guess I gotta turn it back on again. I really dislike the trend of heating and air conditioning on motion sensors, particularly ones that are super sensitive. I was in this one room at Disney World in Florida that the motion sensor was on about a five minute timer. If it didn't sense motion in the room for five minutes, the air conditioning would turn off. 
<laughs> That's great. Do you fall asleep in five minutes? I don't most of the time. And so I'll be lying in bed after five minutes. The air conditioner would turn off. Then I have to wave my hand to turn it on and then hope I fell asleep in five minutes. Needless to say, it took me a long time to fall asleep that night. Also, uh, when you have those rooms, you can't keep the air conditioner on when you go out. And so then you come back to a hot room. Who thought that was a good idea? This happens a lot in Las Vegas where you get to the room and you're like, oh my gosh, my room is like 86 degrees. I need to come in and cool it down. Uh, rooms that the temperature is controlled centrally. I don't get this. Like everybody likes different temperature. Rooms need to be controlled in the room. Rooms that can't go below a certain temperature. This is also common in Vegas where they've manually said it that even if you put it to like 62, it's not going to go below 72. Uh, and then finally, uh, hotel rooms that just have a, a, a lack of fairly common in places like Europe where we just don't have air conditioning because we don't need it, except there are some of us that need our air conditioning because it's summer sometimes. Now, my funny side story here on heating and air conditioning, the most bizarre heating and air conditioning we ever had was when we stayed in this one um, classic Japanese inn in the Mount Aso region of Japan, which is in the south. And this was like, you know, probably a 200-year-old wooden inn. Need to say they didn't install uh, real central heat and air in that time. And so in the rooms, they had these propane powered heaters that literally had a sparker to light it and these like, whoo, like jet engine of heat. I've never had a hotter heater in a room, but it was also one where you like, you couldn't have little kids near it because they'd like just go to this really hot thing. But like both OC Girl and I looked at these things and go like, oh my gosh, uh, please keep, keep away from that. Uh, Points Traveler uh, asked about the hotel at Disney World. It was at the is it Coronado Springs, Colorado Springs? I think it's Coronado Springs um, is the one at Disney World that I stayed in. Uh, Windy City Elevator says China sometimes doesn't provide air conditioning. Uh, Narrow Road says I hate that half the thermostats don't work or impossible to figure out. I hate that too. International hotels, I'll give them a break because it's in a different language, but I'm always trying to use my like Google Translate app to be like, what button is it to keep the fan on? What button is it to keep the fan on? And Scott says, yeah, the central control happens in business hotels in Japan. It does too often. Jose says, I hate them with fake thermostat. They give it to you and you think you use it, but then if it doesn't actually work, uh, that is awful. Uh, okay, the fourth thing the hotels do that can ruin your stay, this is in the bathroom, the shower, when the water pressure is really, really low. And I get that it's really important for us to conserve water. We're in droughts in many parts of the world. There's more people than there used to be, but man, I need my shower to be a bit more than somebody spitting on me to get clean. It takes so long to get clean when there's no water pressure. I feel like I end up using more water in that case than if I just had some high water pressure. This particularly seems to happen in some hotels, especially older hotels, the higher floor you go, as you go up higher, the water pressure gets less. We had this when we stayed at the Fairfield Inn in New York City and we complained about the water pressure on the top floor and they're like, it's because you're on the top, that's all we got. If you want better water pressure, we'll put you on the second floor. I'm like, put us on the second floor so we can actually get clean. And uh, you know, this isn't as bad as the slow water pressure, but then it adds insult to injury when the drain is slow, you know, and you're like, well, very little water is coming out, but even less water is going down. And I didn't intend to take a bath, but I seem to slowly be taking a bath because the water just is filling up. Uh, Paint Killer says, easy solution, rainfall shower heads, let the gravity do the work. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. You will get more water pressure like that, which makes sense. And Taylor says the Vegas water pressure is terrible. It is terrible at many hotels. Uh, yeah, Kristoff says, God forbid if you have long hair, right? OC girl definitely hates it more than I do because it's just hard to get that all uh, soapy up. Yoshi asks if I've tried digital mobile keys before. Uh, you know, I never do that because I don't want to rely on my phone. And so I actually just get the physical key from the hotel. Like for me, I, I think maybe it's a good backup if I lock myself out and I got my phone and I can get in, but I don't, I don't rely on my phone as the key card. The fifth thing that hotels do that can ruin your stay uh, related to key cards actually is giving you key cards that, that don't work. Who's had that happen? I've certainly had that happen where I get keys and I go up to the room and they don't work. They don't work at all. I'm like, what did you do to these keys? Did you not program them? Did you program them for a different room? How do you give me keys that don't actually get me into the room? The other thing I really dislike are room keys that stop working 
before the checkout time, particularly if you have a late checkout. There's one I often ask for late checkouts and they'll be like, sure, well, regular checkout time's 11, but we can give you a checkout as late as four, particularly at Hyatt's as a Globalist or Marriott as a Titanium. And then I always have to remind them, I'm like, hey, that's great, thanks. Do you need to code the key differently? Does it stop working? Oh yeah, it'll stop working at 11. I'm like, uh-huh. Can you make it work till four? Because if I'm in the room till four, I'd like to be able to get back in if I need to. Thanks. Because I feel like when you have a 4 p.m. checkout time, it's usually not somebody sitting in the room until four. That's like, I went out to see the city and then I want to come back and take a shower, pack my luggage or something, and then go. Uh, apparently, Paint Killer is a victim of the key cards that don't work all the time. Uh, I'm glad it's not just me. Windy City Elevator says the mag stripes especially. Um, Kathy says ours stopped working when we were in Hawaii. <laughs> Point Traveler says this is even worse. Key cards for rooms that are already occupied. That is worse. Points Traveler, and I've had that before. When I stayed at the Hyatt Place in New Jersey, key card to a room that was already occupied, went down again, another key card to another room that was already occupied, and I'm like, I'm not taking a third key card. You are taking me to a room <laughs> that isn't occupied. And how are you gonna make sure, how are you gonna guarantee me you're not gonna give people keys to my room? Luckily, I'm honest, and I didn't take those people's stuff, but probably wouldn't fit me anyway. Uh, and it wouldn't be yellow, so I don't think I want it. The sixth practice that hotels do that can ruin your stay is they have check-in lines that are ridiculous, like out the door, around the block. This is particularly common in Las Vegas. Las Vegas hotels are notorious for 45 minute and one hour long check-in lines. Um, and some can be because they just get a lot of people at one time, but it can also be that the people at the front desk are just generally slow. You know, I really appreciate a fast check-in because I've likely traveled a long time to get to this hotel and the last thing that I want is to stand at that front desk forever and a day. And you know, there are some hotels where they feel like they need to explain the whole resort to you. I would much prefer if they ask, hey, would you like me to tell you about the resort? And I'd be like, right now I'd just like to go to sleep. Maybe I'll come back uh, and talk to somebody about it. But no, I gotta, I gotta go over it all for you. Um, and also uh, related to check-in hotels that don't honor their check-in time. You know, if the check-in time is 3 p.m., 3 p.m. is when I should get my room, not 4 p.m., not 5 p.m. All rooms should be ready at the check-in time of 3 p.m. Now, in Japan, uh, there are sticklers for check-in time the, like the other way. Like if you get to many Japanese hotels at like 2.55 p.m. and check-in time is three, they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, you're here before check-in time. If you wouldn't mind just having a seat and then when it's check-in time, we'll check you in. It's like it's five minutes from now. What's gonna happen in five minutes? Just please have a seat. And in five minutes, they say, okay, check-in time is ready. You can go to your room. But you know what? I appreciate they do that because they're like, all of our rooms are gonna be ready at three o'clock. We don't have to do any of this Mickey Mouse business. Is your room ready or not? They're just ready. Um, Hotel Productions TV says, is it the I stayed at the Bellagio and the lines were 45 minutes long. That's crazy, but I totally believe it. Um, and uh, <laughs> Narrow Road says, I'm convinced Flash from Zootopia moonlights at most resort hotel desks. If you are not familiar with Flash from Zootopia, that is the sloth who works at the DMV, uh, much like any DMV employee and almost, you know, just, hi, how are you? Ah, I gotta go! Yeah, that's right. Um, Chris says, Luxor had a check-in app. We skipped the super long line, took five minutes. That's a great tip. And that's a great reason to use like the check-in apps, like with the virtual key or things like that. Go to your room, avoid the line. And then if you want to get a real key, check it in. And some of these hotels in Vegas have made it where like you can check in on the app and then go to a kiosk and get a room key. I would totally do that too. And James says, yeah, I agree, Chris. If they want me out at 11, they can check me in at three. Perfect. If they get like, it seems to me like if they, if your room's not ready till four, you should get like an extra hour in the room, right? Like you paid for it and they don't seem to honor the actual room. Oh my Lord, my Vong says, I was at Mandalay Bay in Vegas and didn't get my room till 11.30 p.m. That's cra That's like crazy insane. Crazy insane. The seventh common hotel practice that really ruin your vacation are, that really ruins after your vacation are when hotels put more charges on your bill 
after checkout. You know, this often comes in like food service, mini bar, these sorts of things where like you check out and they give you a bill and then later they email you another bill that has a whole bunch more charges on it. Resorts World in Las Vegas did this with my food. Like I did a room charge for lunch and for breakfast and it wasn't on there when I checked out, but then it showed up later. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with your computer systems that they're that slow to take the room charge to get there. Luckily, those were things that I actually bought, but this is particularly annoying if it's things you didn't buy because then it's just, it's much harder to like argue though. I didn't buy that. Can you take it off my thing? Then if you're standing at the front desk to be like, this, this isn't me. You need to take this right off my bill. Uh, also, I, I, there's a lot of hotels that offer like self-checkout through the television or self-checkout through the mobile app. I don't, I don't get when it doesn't work. Like you're like, you go to the mobile app and says, mobile checkout not available. You go to the TV, uh, sorry, self-checkout not available. I'm like, do y'all want more work? Do y'all want more people coming by the front desk? But I'm curious, you know what, sometimes at hotels I've just, I've had it. I don't want to wait in their line. I don't want to do this. And I just leave. I don't check out. Uh, fellow explorers, what about you? Do you ever get to that point where you're just like, I'm not checking out, I'm just bailing, or do you always check out? Let me know uh, in the chat. I'm really curious. Um, and uh, Vic says the good part about Airbnbs is there's never extra bills. Well, except maybe extra cleaning fees if you clean something, right? Uh, CGA says I got charged for waters I never open. That is annoying. Um, and uh, yeah, this is one too that I don't have on the list because not everybody's an elite member, um, but uh, Vieg Tug says, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I'm gonna go ahead uh, and say, uh, not sure if this is coming, but hotels that don't upgrade you as an elite and you have to ask and then they're suddenly available. That is definitely annoying as well. Um, Eat Van City says, I just don't check out and leave. Is that not appropriate? Uh, Hotel Productions TV says, I always check out. Uh, Matt says, I bail all the time. They're still looking for me at Motel 6. Nair Road says, hotels frequently charge me for internet. Colin says, do you even have to check out? Just leave, leave the key in the bin. James always checks out. Taylor says, I didn't know you have to do that. Michael says, most will just check you out without doing anything. Zachary says, I call the front desk and say, I'm leaving. Uh, who's that girl? Says, I do that too. Um, and uh, Max says, I got scammed by people that overheard my room number and were billing their drinks at the pool and the bar. They got charged to me. I don't think that's fair at MGM. That's pretty lame, Max. Uh, and thank you all for your reports of whether you check in or check out. If you're watching the archive, uh, please let me know what you think as well. So it'll be interesting to, to read those uh, later. All right, number eight, the eighth practice the hotels do that can really ruin your stay. This one's a bit more in just design of hotels when they were building the room is rooms that have really poor lighting. I don't get it. I get into so many hotel rooms and I go to turn on the lights, particularly because I'm doing a hotel review video and I just, I just can't get the room bright. The room is like, is like dark. I'm like, what is this room? Is this room a nightclub or do I maybe have to like read some, does anybody read books anymore? I guess nobody reads books anymore that they need lights, but I've been in so many hotel rooms that in an effort to make it cool or hip, they just make it like super duper dark. Um, and particularly I have an issue when it's in the bathroom because people need to see what they're doing in the bathroom when they're in front of the mirror, they're shaving, they're doing makeup. Like we need bright lights in the bathroom. The ninth thing hotels do that can totally ruin your stay is when housekeeping ignores the do not disturb sign or no housekeeping sign or whatever they call it at the particular hotel. I had this happen to me recently where I had the do not disturb sign on the door, 8 a.m. housekeeping. No, no housekeeping. Thank you. Uh, it says do not disturb. Okay, nine o'clock comes by. Tick, tick, tick. Housekeeping. Do you, do you see the sign? The sign says, don't bug me. Why do you keep bugging me? Tick, tick, tick. Housekeeping. I'm like, I'm, I'm checking out <laughs> at noon. Please go away and come back at noon. Thank you. Uh, I don't, it was like the sign wasn't even there. I promise you the sign was in fact there. Um, all right, uh, but related to lights, Dr. Brunga says, you know, worse than dim lights or bright lights, I ended up using my phone flashlight before sleep. Yeah, you know what, I, related to lights, I really like hotels that have some kind of a, like a nightlight mode where like you can have dim lights on 
but you're right at nighttime I kind of want to keep the bathroom light on but like to a dim level so the ideal light in my opinion should be kind of you like you have options you can make the room bright you can make the room dim Mm, I'm thirsty. What is Chris drinking today? Today, Chris is drinking the unsweetened, bold green tea from Ito N. Mm. This is one of my favorite Japanese iced teas. It is really strong, but you can really taste the tea flavor. And what's also particularly cool about these Ito N teas uh, is they have a haiku on them. And the haiku on this one says, Floating on water, the scent of magnolia, summer breeze. All right, there you go. That's your <clears throat> haiku of the day from Yellow Productions. Emma says, I had housekeeping, ignore the do not disturb sign. I got out of the shower when housekeeping walked in. Crazy, crazy. Um, AZ intern says, maybe you heard the housekeeping that was down the hall and uh, you just thought it was you. No, 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 it's definitely me. I could see in the peephole. It was, it was definitely me. And when I respond, they definitely responded to me. Uh, Zachary says, why do you lights in the bathroom? You know where your body parts are. I don't, Zachary, do you, do you shave in the dark? I don't know. I need to like, I don't want to shave my sideburns off. So I need to get to a certain point and that's pretty uh, in the dark. What do you do like at night? I want to make sure I actually get it like into the toilet and not, you know, anywhere anywhere else in the room. And Tamala says, I can't believe I'm actually catching live. Welcome. I'm glad you could make it. Hotel Productions TV has had this drink before. How do you like it? I hope you like it. Um, all right, Ten. <clears throat> the 10th thing that hotels do that can ruin your stay is mandatory valet parking. Now, if you've watched my video reviews of hotels, you'll know I often slam valet parking. Not just because it exists, uh, it, valet parking can work well, can, uh, but doesn't always, and I find mostly doesn't usually work well at most hotels because valet parking is often really, really slow. Uh, many of the hotels, older hotels in New York City or Washington DC, their garage isn't even near the hotel. And so when you valet park your car, they're going like two blocks away to get your car. It takes like 15 minutes, takes like 30 minutes. Um, that was the, one of my favorite hotels in Vegas is the Marriott Grand Chateau, but I was really down on them because it would take 30 minutes to get my car. And I just, I don't have 30 minutes to stand around and wait in the lobby for somebody to go get my car. So I really like hotels that have self-parking as an option. Um, but you know, one hotel that does it right, the Ondas in Maui, they always had like a whole bunch of people out there when I would go to get my car. It was never much of a wait. And so I don't mind when valet parking is quick and speedy. Um, the Shade Hotel in Redondo Beach, another one, those guys would hustle. Our cars were out quickly, but I can't, I don't have time. Like I, again, I need to shave after 30 minutes of waiting for my car. Um, Eat Ben says, this is, I like valet parking in big cities with limited parking or tight lots. I like the option of valet parking. I don't like 100% mandatory valet parking. Brian says, I paid $92 a night at the JW Marriott San Francisco for parking. Oh my Lord. That is crazy. Um, and Justin says, we got charged $45 just valet parking to be told we have to park and remove our own car because no one knew stick. That is awesome. Windy City Elevator says it's even more annoying if you live in an apartment that only has valet parking. That's annoying. I would go out of my mind if where I lived, my car had to be valet parked on the time. Uh, John says, I always look for free self-parking in hotels in Vegas. Me too. Like, it's actually a criteria when I look for hotels, I look to see hotels that have self-parking free is even better. Points Traveler says, hey, what do you do about tipping? Do you tip each time they take or drop off your car? Uh, I tip when I pick up the car. That's just my mentality. I'll tip them a dollar or two when I pick up the car. I don't tip them anything when I drop it off. That's just me. Um, and uh, Brian says, yeah, Valley only $92, JW. Crazy, crazy. Uh, Chris says the merit at the Irvine Spectrum was fast and friendly. I'm great to hear. There can be fast and friendly ones, but it seems like often they are not. Um, okay. The 11th thing that hotels do that can ruin your stay is hotels that provide shuttles, like airport shuttles, and the shuttles don't leave or pick up on time. You know, if you're staying at a hotel near the airport that has an airport shuttle, you know what that shuttle needs to do? It needs to arrive and depart on time because we all have flights to catch. And if the shuttles aren't on time, 
they might as well not be there. Uh, and so, or they have to go. I've been in hotels where they're like, oh, this, yeah, I don't know where the driver is. It's like, I got it. Now I gotta go call an Uber because your shuttle's not gonna go, or I gotta walk or do something like that. So, well, def definitely one good thing about staying in Japan. Hotels in Japan that provide shuttles, those things are on time to the minute. Uh, and Brian Fisk in the chat, thank you very much for the um, hippopotamus, maybe? I think it's hippopotamus. Yeah, that was my best hippopotamus impression right there. Uh, all right. The twelfth thing hotels do that can ruin your stay is when you get to the room and there aren't enough power outlets. In this modern day and age, all of us have like way too many electronics with us from phones to laptops to, you know, cameras to drones to who knows what. And we need to plug them in and so we need a lot of power outlets. And I've been in hotel rooms, there was one power outlet. I was in a hotel in France about eight years ago, so maybe before the computer revolution, but there was one power outlet in the room. One, what? not two, one, one power outlet. Like who makes a room with one power outlet? You know what, at least give me a power strip. That's why I carry a power strip, but um, I, I just, I don't get it. So please provide hotels more than one power outlet. Uh, related to shuttles, I see a lot of chat that says Million Mile Drive says Disney World is the only place I would take a shuttle. Um, Kangas Conrad says I booked a super shuttle. Now they're limiting spaces, basically like an Uber now. Uh, Paint Killer says I don't uh, have a lot of electronics. I only bring my phone. Look, maybe this is just a me problem because I've, I've I have a lot of electronics uh, doing videos. Um, oh, Barry says, the other problem is when they give you USB outlets and they don't work. Yeah, I think that's something that housekeeping probably never tests, right? Maybe they test the power plug because they got to plug their vacuum in, but they probably never put anything in those USB outlets. Uh, and then this one to say, uh, some hotels have uh, two plugs in the lamp bedside. Uh, there aren't any or they're slow, right? They give you USB charging ports, but they're the slow charging ports. Uh, and Sarah, another one. Yeah, like a room that has two outlets and they're super far from the bed or they're super far from the desk. Like if you want to put your, you want to plug anything in there, you just plug it in, like leave it on the floor. It's like, come on, we need to, this should be in a place that's near something so I can actually put my electronics on something instead of putting them on the floor. Uh, as AZ intern, this is a good one. I don't have it on the list, but I'm glad you brought it up. I don't mind old hotels, but I don't like it when they smell old. Yeah, definitely things hotels can do to ruin your stay is when the hotel room smells, uh, especially if it smells like smoke uh, and you're a non-smoker. I can't stand that. Or they're just really stuffy. That's awful as well. Uh, and Norma, thank you for the super sticker, the little fox right there. The Yellow Productions crew and I really appreciate it. All right, let's go on to number 13. Uh, lights that are hard to turn off. Okay, we talked about lights earlier, and I said it was awful when the room is dim and you can't see anything. But what's even worse is when you can't figure out how to turn the lights off. I, have you guys been in a room like that before? I've, I'm like, I, I'm walking around five, ten minutes. Where is the off switch for the light by the door? I can't sleep with that light on. So sometimes I have to call the front desk to be like, can you please tell me where the, I don't know where that light switch is. And sometimes when they're like floor lamps, like is the light on the top of the lamp? Is it on the bottom? Is it someplace else? Is it on the headboard? Is that connected to a switch? Do I just have to unplug it? And obviously when it's a ceiling one, you can't just unplug it. Do I need to take out the light bulb? Hmm. If you watched my... Death Valley review uh, of the hotel in Death Valley, the uh, what used to be the um, Furnace Creek Inn, now it's like the Death Valley uh, Inn. I mean, Furnace Creek Inn now, what's the name? I should remember the name, I think it's the Death Valley Inn. The Death Valley Inn, our light um, in the entrance was flickering. It was like blinking, it was a cheap fluorescent light that was like on its first leg out and people watch the review and be like, Chris, what was going on about that blinking light? And I called the front desk and they were like, that's strange. Do you want us to send somebody there? I'm like, yeah, and by the time they got there, the light stopped blinking, but you know, that's one who, I don't know how long uh, it's gonna be that way. Uh, Kathy uh, gives a thumbs up, uh, and so, yeah, by the way, if you're enjoying this video and you haven't given a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. There are 315 of you watching and 100 likes, so uh, can we get that up to 150? I would really appreciate it, because every time you give this video a like, 
gives a piece of premium bamboo to the Yellow Productions crew. They are hungry, and it tells YouTube you enjoy this video, so they should share it with others. Let's get a few more people in here and in the archive. I appreciate it. And you know what? If you give the video a thumbs up, it doesn't cost you anything. So, yeah, Seth says, please smash the like button. Thank you. Um, yeah, I see in the chat a lot of negatives about pet fees. They can be expensive, too. We have uh, we have a bunny rabbit. We've never traveled with Mr. Uh, MacGyver the bunny, um, but yes, I can see pet fees being annoying as well. Um, all right, let's go ahead and go to number 14. The 14th thing that hotels do that can ruin your stay is um, lights that won't stay on at night. So I mentioned Heating and air conditioning is motion sensitive. Sometimes hotels have that too, particularly in the bathroom or things like that, where the lights just turn off when there's no motion. And then the room is super dark. You're like, I would like to leave, to me personally, I like to leave the light on in the bathroom. If there's no night light mode, then I, I like close the door ever so slightly. So just a little bit of light comes out in the room. So at nighttime, I can find my way to the bathroom and not like kick into the bed. But when they've got those darn motion controlled lights that turn off after nobody being in the bathroom, I can't find my way there. So me, I travel with these little USB powered lights that I plug into the outlets and set up my own night lights. And if you're wondering, Chris, do you really kick into the bed in this night? I've broken my toe twice in different hotel rooms and that's a real drag in hotel. You stay in hotel rooms enough, you're gonna kick into enough things in them because it's just not the house that you live in. Uh, Gloria says, hey Chris, what do you do with your bunny MacGyver when y'all travel uh, in Orange County where we live? There is a bunny hotel um, that just takes care of bunnies for people when they travel uh, and so that is where we leave MacGyver. Uh, and uh, Yoshi says, hey, you know what? We got to 150 likes. Thank you, everybody. We're at 161 likes. Can we see 360? That's a level it up for, you know, one like a person. That would be even more awesome. But thank you for the 60 more likes for everybody who hit that like button. Uh, Chris Cole says, yeah, how about mismatched bulbs? Soft white, warm white, bright white. I mean, me, I'm a, I'm a warm white person. Warm white, warm white light person. I don't like the harsh white lights, which is funny because... Sitting here making this video, I've got some really uh, bright white lights here. Not warm white, they're cold lights because it just works better for the video. Uh, but in my hotel rooms, I feel like those um, bright white lights just make everything look cold and stark and a little bit of warm white is nicer. But yes, it's even worse when they're mismatched. Uh, Chris R says, hey, what about what about the sunlight that comes through the crack in the drapes the first thing in the morning? What about that, Chris? Actually, Chris, that is number 15. The 15th thing the hotels can do that'll ruin your stay is give you drapes or blinds or whatever that just don't close. They don't close all the way. No matter how hard you try, you can't get these things to close. And so in the morning, you're just like, oh, the sun, it melts. I'm melting from the sun. Yeah, that's awful. Um, and if you've watched my video about hotel room hacks, one of the things you can do if you get some of those blinds uh, is if uh, the room has hangers that have clips, is you can take the hanger that has clips and clip it to clip the blinds together. So that's my pro tip for you if you have that problem. The 16th thing hotels can do to ruin your stay is when they give you blankets and comforters on the bed that are just super heavy. I don't know where some hotels get their blankets and comforters from if they're like prison bulletproof issue or something like that but it's like oh this comforter weighs like 40 pounds it's like a you know uh it's like somebody's like lying on me all night uh i just i can't i can't do it um also l lumpy pillows i mean d does nobody ever check the pillows at some of these hotels where it's like this pillow has not been a normal soft pillow for decades, it seems like. It's just all lumps on the inside. And then finally about beds, I don't really get the trend of beds that are made so tightly that you like you can't get into them. I, it's like, oh, this, I can't pull the sheet off this bed. So like, it's nice, make it nice, make it look nice, but I mean, we're all gonna have to get in the bed eventually, so maybe we can actually make it easy to open that up. Hmm. Yeah, hotel 
<laughs> Hotel Productions TV says, how about when the blankets have hair? That's awful. Yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. Rooms that aren't clean uh, is definitely no bueno. Uh, Painkiller says, I love heavy blankets. I love warm blankets, but not heavy blankets. That's where I draw, right? There's warm and there's heavy which in my mind are like two different things. Uh, Juicy Fruit says paper thin blankets and flat pillows. I've been uh, to those rooms as well. Uh, yeah, you get that awful pillow and you get the achy neck. Uh, excessively dirty windows. Yeah, there are a bunch of hotels where you're like, you ever clean these windows? It'd be nice to clean the window. You know, you clean them on both sides, inside and outside, especially if you're paying for a view room. Yeah, Barry wonders why I have six pillows in a bed. Barry, I don't know either. Like the first thing I do in those rooms is like, Take pillows off the bed, put them on a chair someplace, because I can't sleep with that many pillows on the bed. You got like the sleeping pillow, and then the decorative square pillow, and then the round pillow. Like the pillows on beds are absolutely out of control. John says the first thing I do is I unmake the bed. The first thing I do is a video review of the room, and then I unmake the bed. Yeah, because you don't want to see a messy bed. The 17th thing that really ruin your stay in hotels are pressure sensitive mini bars who what guest likes these things these things are awful you look at the stuff you move it around and all of a sudden you're charged for a coke that you didn't even drink these things are super prevalent in las vegas doesn't matter if you put it back and you know what frankly putting the warning sign doesn't help there particularly if you've got little toddlers with you that's where it's like you know during covid it's been pretty good for us traveling with the traveling princess because most places have just emptied the mini bar so we haven't had to deal with that but uh, i don't I don't look for it. I don't look forward to it when she's actually in a room that has a fully stocked pressure sensitive mini bar. Not that she'll be eating and drinking all of it, but she'll just run us up a bill that we'll have to say, I didn't buy that, and it's more charges to dispute. 18 is bathrooms with glass walls or only sheer curtains. And I, by glass walls, I don't mean just the glass wall inside the shower i mean i do mean that too because i hate those things where like you get the shower the bathtub and it doesn't actually have a door or a real curtain it just has like a little two foot glass thing and then the bathroom ends up like full of water because there's nothing to keep the water in what i mean are bathrooms entirely that don't have actual walls made of drywall and painted things that like you know hotels that have decided that the outside wall for the bathroom is glass and then they said, well, you know what? We're going to make it private, so we'll give you a, sh a sheer curtain, like a curtain that you can see through. I'm like, why Why do you even put this here? What? If you're going to do that, why don't you give me two curtains? Give me the sheer curtain for the people who want to see the shadow inside the bathroom, and you know, give me the real curtain for like everybody else that actually wants some privacy when they're in the bathroom. The 19th thing that hotels do that can ruin your stay is bathroom floors that are slippery. Uh, floors that are slippery, tubs that are slippery, showers that are slippery. I, like, I don't get it. Do these people have feet that are just like sandpaper or something like that? I mean, and they don't have grab bars and you're just like, it's like a slip and slide in some of these bathrooms. And you know what? I, I'm on the fairly younger side, though I'm sure there's plenty of you watching that are like, Chris, you're not, you're not really that young. I'm not a senior citizen that has an even harder time with those slippery floors. And you know what? Providing the rubber sticky thing, how about we just make a floor that isn't like a slip and slide? That would be great. Um, Windy City Elevators says, uh, yeah, some luxurious hotels I know don't do much for bathroom privacy. Points sh Traveler says it's awkward sharing those rooms with your parents. I think it's awkward sharing those rooms with almost anybody. The Uniplex says, I hate glass doors in the bathroom. I hate the trend. Thank you. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Eat Van says this is awkward and traveling friends. Yeah, if it's just if it's just you, it's not a big deal. Gravel says the W is bad with uh, glass door bathrooms. Indeed. Uh, Melissa says, I always put down a towel outside the shower bathtub when I go in. That's a good tip to make it less slippery. It's also a good tip just to mop up the water in case you got one of those with the glass door. I mean, we've been in some hotel bathrooms where it's just like, you take a normal shower and then you're like, oh, it looks like the tide came in, you know, because that was all the water that didn't end up in the drain. It ended up on the floor and then ended up out into the room. And it has to happen all the time. So I just don't get it. Um, yeah, Hotel Productions TV says we stayed at Hampton Inn. Floor slippery, my mom slipped in her back. That sucks, right? Sucks that, like, that's a way to really ruin your vacation when you fall down in the bathroom. Kel says, I broke my shoulder due to a wax tub. Oh my gosh, Kel, I am so sorry to hear that. Um, that, that must have really hurt, like really hurt. Uh, Brian 
gives us thumbs down to sliding bathroom doors. I agree, thumbs down to sliding bathroom doors. And Yoshi, uh, thanks for the super big blue thumbs up right there. I appreciate it. Number 20, only one set of towels. Uh, this is especially, okay, hotels will give you six pillows on the bed and then they'll give you one towel. Like, really? <laughs> one towel? I mean, as a, like an adult, I need to take a shower, I need to wash, wipe my hands at the sink. I, I need more than one towel. Why don't you give me a couple towels? This has been like particularly annoying during COVID time. And you know, it's really been a way where hotels are like, well, I don't want to give you more towels. I don't want to wash more towels. You can ask for more towels. It takes you a bunch of time to bring up more towels. The best solution I've seen to hotels that want to be stingy like this uh, is one hotel we stayed in in Japan that just had, it was an onsen hotel, so this makes a little bit more sense being a hot spring hotel, but they, in the lobby, just had racks of towels. You want a towel? Come get it from the rack and take it with you wherever you want to go. It's the hot spring or your room or, or whatever. Instead of having to like call somebody and wait 30 minutes for somebody to bring you a towel. Like, I want to take a shower now. I don't want to take a shower 30 minutes from now when you decide to actually mm, bring me more towels. But it's even more annoying when you're in the bathroom and there's no place to hang the towels. Like no place near the shower to hang the towel. Like you're like, I take a shower or a bath, uh, and I now I want to reach for a towel. I can't, I can't reach for the towel. The towel is like some way across the bathroom. Like it needs to be in reach of the place they actually get wet. And the 21st thing that hotels do uh, that really can ruin your stay, particularly if you uh, use a computer at all for anything, is hotels that don't have a desk area. This seems to be a trend that's becoming more and more common, I'm finding particularly at, uh, you know, Foofy Hotels, W Hotels is um, uh, famous for this. On Dawes Hotels with Hyatt, a little bit too, where there's just no no desk area at all. They, don't, they assume you don't need to sit and do anything. And whether or not you need to use a computer, I at least like a place to like eat something if I like bring back uh, like some dessert to my room or maybe I want to have a muffin or yogurt for breakfast instead of going down to just have a bed and then maybe just have a chair but not an actual eating thing is really super annoying. Uh, Narrow Road says, I always ask for more towels and sometimes they sound like you're the only person you've ever had. Yeah, it's strange. I have to feel like you're not the only one narrow road. Um, and Tamla says the worst thing is if you call for more towels and they never come. That is even worse. You are right. Juicy Fruit says hotel towels are like sandpaper. Cheap hotel towels are like, are like sandpaper. Not all of them. Uh, and I'm glad to see I'm not the only one that hates hotels that don't have desks, but hotels uh, production TV uh, doesn't like it either. And Brandon says I need that desk for a place to eat. Yeah, I'm with you. How do you order room service if you don't have a place to eat as well? Um, <laughs> Christoph says, I had to print stuff while in Cancun. I had a computer tech fix the PC three times. Uh, and the Uniplex says, every hotel room should have two chairs, one table, and a ton of outlets. Though you're right, those should be a requirement for hotels. All right, now before I get to uh, q and A, I I just want to go through my quick list of things that I, I look for that I really like in hotels. Like, Chris, how do you get five tovers on a hotel. Well, it's a hotel that has a great location. Location, location, location. That's what my mom always said about buying a house. It's true about a hotel. Uh, hotels that are close to public transit, if it's in a big city uh, with easy access from the airport. Hotels that have a self-parking option. Hotels that have a good price, that, that matters. Um, hotels that have natural light in the room. In the daytime, I want a big window and I want it to be bright. Uh, and I want windows that open. Win plus points in my mind for windows that open. Even if it's in a place that's Vegas that I wouldn't want to open it, I might just want to open it up to get some fresh air in and then close it up to get the, the like smelly room out. Like this was the opposite of people who said, I hate rooms that smell yucky. Well, if you can open a window, they don't smell as yucky. Hotels that have comfortable beds. When we stayed at the Shade Hotel in Redondo Beach, they had Tempur-Pedic beds. That was super awesome. I wish more hotels would prioritize the comfort of the mattress. Um, rooms that have lots of surface area, desks, places to put stuff, uh, lots of surface area in the bathroom, not just a little tiny sink. Uh, rooms that have toilet paper and facial tissue. 
I'm sorry, but toilet paper is not sufficient for blowing my nose or wiping my face. That should actually be some facial tissue. Um, amenity boxes in the room that include floss and the toothbrush. I feel like those are the most often forgotten things when we travel. Plenty of ventilation in the bathroom. It needs a fan and the fan needs to work as opposed to something that just gets super uh, either smelly or super uh, damp and humid and you just you just can't clear it out. Hotels need to have speedy internet that works in the whole room. You know, they put those access points in the hallway and if it's a big room, it might not actually work when you're by the window. So internet needs to work everywhere, not just when you're sitting by the front door. I'm an American and I love ice. I love my cold ice beverages. So I need, mm, ice machines, or if I call for ice, needs to be delivered quickly. Not places like when I was in France and wanted to get ice, and they're like, oh, you can get it from the hotel bar. And I'm like, great, can I get some ice? And they give me a glass with one cube of ice. I'm like, can I have more? And then they give me two cubes of ice. <laughs> you guys, you guys are funny. Um, I really like hotels that have filtered water dispensers, not rooms that charge me $7 for water or not hotels that I have to buy it from the gift shop for $7, but places that actually near the ice machines or in the hallways or in the lobby have a place that you can fill up your bottle with nice cold filtered uh, dispensers. Hotels need to have long hours for breakfast. I don't get these places where like, Breakfast starts at 10 a.m. or breakfast is from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Like breakfast should be 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. or even noon. But it needs to start at 5 a.m. because many of us have early flights. Uh, and so if you don't have an option at 5 a.m., that 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. flight, you're just not getting breakfast anymore. Uh, and there should be an option for like a buffet or quick serve breakfast ordering from uh, like a waiter or waitress just simply takes too long and the lines to check in have to be short. So that's my list of things that when hotels do that, then uh, they get, as Brandon says right there, five tofers. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, fellow explorers. So those are all of the things that I hate about hotels, that you hate about hotels. And so, you know, when you're looking at TripAdvisor reviews or my reviews, you should definitely look at those things and say, I'm not saying a hotel that like hits one of those things that totally ruin our vacation. Now, if you got a question and I didn't answer it before, go ahead and toss it in the chat, put a question mark and I will go ahead and answer it. And as always, I'll be giving away a Yellow Productions Crew shirt a little later here in the live stream. Um, yeah, T.O. says, I like nice cold AC. I like it too. And I guess I said I hate ones that don't work, so that's definitely a pro for me as well. Melissa says, I never get breakfast at hotels too early. You know, if it went till 11 or noon, wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, Juicy Fruit says, what's the best hotel you've stayed in anywhere in the world? That's an easy one. My favorite hotel anywhere in the world is the Andaz in Maui. That is my favorite hotel anywhere in the world. Uh, JW Marriott Hong Kong, uh, probably second after the Andaz in Maui. Um, and Brandon says, I expect hotel breakfast to last two hours longer than fast food breakfast. That's a great point. So if McDonald's ends at 10, the hotel one should go to noon. Uh, Josh says, uh, best area to stay in Barcelona, hotel, Airbnb. I don't, we stayed at like a Hilton that was by the beach. It was nice. Mm. Or near Las Ramblas is pretty nice too. Um, there you go, those are my couple tips. Taylor says, how many hotels have you rated five Tophers? I imagine uh, it's only a handful. Um, you know what? Two, two, one, two. I think the Andaz in Maui got five Tophers. It's interesting that I uh, say it's my favorite and I'm, I'm not particularly clear on it. Uh, it either got four and a half or five. It was four and a half, five. I think because it was expensive, it might've gotten four and a half. Uh, the Tokyo Central Hotel, Tokyo Central Hotel, Tokyo Station Hotel uh, has received five Tophers. Uh, those are a couple of the five Topher reviews. Brent says, your favorite hotel in Anaheim. You know, I live 10 miles from Anaheim, so I don't stay a lot of the hotels in Anaheim. Uh, the one I would recommend though, that a lot of people seem to really like, it's either a Hyatt Place or a Hyatt House on the intersection of Harbor and Catella. Uh, Kathy says, we have a spare afternoon. Which beach do you recommend that is close to Anaheim? Uh, probably the closest beach to Anaheim would be Huntington Beach, um, but not much further is Laguna Beach. So Kathy, if you can only go to one beach in uh, Orange County, I would recommend Laguna Beach. Uh, 
Juicy Fruit says, which area do you stay in London, UK? So I got three hotels that I really like in London, UK. I like the County Hall Marriott that is right along the river there in London. I like the Park Lane Marriott that is right by the Marble Arch and their high-end shopping district. And then I like the Renaissance uh, St. Pancras Hotel that is right by St. Pancras uh, Station. The great part about that is it's like super connected to transit. So there's three suggestions for you. Brian likes the JW Marriott Anaheim. Yeah, that one's new. So I haven't been in to check it out uh, yet. My dad, Electric Rick, says he likes round beds. They are hard to find. It's hard to find a round bed. You are right. Uh, Okay, Sean, uh, favorite hotel, Andaz in Maui. Jake says, have you ever stayed in a pod hotel? No, not yet. Now that I got the Traveling Princess, I don't know uh, when that might be. The Uniplex says, do you miss traveling to Japan? Absolutely. We're waiting patiently for Japan to reopen. Um, Chris says, have you considered the top five best worst cities to visit? Uh, no, but I'll, I'll consider it. You know... Worst is hard because we don't like to travel to awful destinations, but may, maybe best. Um, Justin says, what are the best buffets in Vegas? Uh, you know, like, like I feel the reigning champ of buffets right now is the Bacchanal Buffet at Caesars Palace. It's the most expensive. I really like the um, Wicked Spoon at the Cosmopolitan. The Wynn and the Bellagio buffets are pretty solid, too. Uh, Yoshi Productions says, what's your favorite hotel in Boston? I haven't stayed in a ton of them. Uh, I have stayed in the Residence in South Boston, something like that. That was pretty nice. Felix says, I hate overpaying for a mediocre hotel to an event being in town like San Diego Comic-Con. I also hate paying $500 for a hotel that, you know, you should have got for 100 bucks. Tom says, do you prefer JW Marriott or Marriott Marquis? I mean, there's kind of a range. There aren't very many Marriott Marquis. I like the Marriott Marquis in San Diego. I like the Marriott Marquis in Times Square, New York City. I like the Marriott Marquis in Washington, D.C., uh, I probably like the JW Marriott's in Washington, D.C. better. So I probably like JW Marriott's better. For me, it really depends how good the lounge is, whichever one has a better lounge. If the, if it's a JW Marriott that has no lounge, but the Marriott Marquis does, then I'll take the one that has a lounge. Uh, Billy says, if you stayed in hotels in Denver, I have, but I haven't um, done any fantastic uh, reviews on them. Uh, Ryan says, when's the last time you've uh, come to Kobe, Japan? It's been a long time. I think 2004 was the last time I've been in Kobe so that we could have Kobe beef. Uh, Tamala says, I love your DC collabs right now. Thanks, Tamala. If you guys haven't seen it, I did one with Rob from Trip Hacks DC on the Yellow Productions channel. And then just a couple days ago, he posted one that we did about how to not stand out like a tourist in Washington DC over on his channel, Trip Hacks DC. Jake asks if you pay the extras when you rent a car. I pay to rent a car and that's all I pay for. I don't pay for nothing else. Uh, if you're like, fill up the gas, I fill up the gas. Insurance, nope. Uh, I use the Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card, which provides um, primary collision damage loss, blah, blah, blah. So uh, all those extra fees are just scams. Grant says, what's the top bucket list uh, location you've yet to travel to? I think uh, Greece is high on our list. Finland, Iceland, those are a few. Um, John asked the best hotel in Chicago, and have I ever been there? I have been to Chicago. I don't think I've stayed in enough hotels to really tell you which one's the best. I really want to stay at the Conrad uh, in Chicago because I like Conrad hotels. Um, but yes, I've been there a few times because there's a frequent flyer conference that's often held in Chicago, but it's in like Elk Grove near the airport. Uh, but I've been there to see the Bean and some of the things in downtown Chicago. Um, Tom wants to know why the Western Denver Airport's the most expensive hotel of all time. I couldn't tell you, Tom. That's a good question. Uh, Derek says, what hotel do you like better? Caesars Palace or Bellagio? Um, Caesars Palace. I like Caesars Palace. It's just, it's cla like Caesars Palace is just classic Vegas. And their new towers, like the Augustus Tower and things like that, really quite nice inside. I like the food court at Caesars Palace. It's expensive. Like, it's an expensive food court, but I feel like the food's pretty good. Uh, Yoshi asks how my second channel, The Office Survival Guide, is doing. It'd probably be better if I've published videos <laughs> recently to it. I think the last video I put up there was a year ago. Uh, pandemic, having the traveling princess, such a whole bunch of things have made it challenging to keep up with the second Office Survival Guide channel. Hope to get back to it someday, but right now it's sort of on a 
temporary hold. Yeah, Laurel says second show. Yeah, Office Survival Guide, you can look it up, search for it, uh, where I give you tips not just to survive the office week, but to crush it. So if you want tips on like how to do well at a job interview, or how to prepare your resume, or how to stay awake in boring meetings, you will find that over on the Office Survival Guide. Uh, Mr. Sasaki says, do you have a favorite hotel in San Diego? The Park Hyatt Aviar Carlsbad, uh, probably my favorite in all of the San Diego region. Um, I have stayed at the Intercontinental, which is nice. I've stayed at the uh, Hyatt Manchester downtown, which is nice if you can get a good room rate. It's often really expensive, but I think if I had to pick one, I'd pick the Marriott Marquis, just as a Marriott sort of person. Uh, the Hilton um, Bayfront is nice too. It kind of looks like a board cube, but that's uh, like if you're like if you're coming to downtown as a tourist those uh, hotels that have bay views in downtown, uh, you can't go wrong. Tio Wildcast says, Chris, do you go on cruises? No, OC Girl gets seasick, so um, we're not big fans of the cruises. Kelly Trucker says, after watching the Diamond Head video, my family and I travel to Dahu and hike Diamond Head. Thank you. Awesome, Kelly Trucker. Did you go when, like, they do reservations now? Did you have to do that, or did you go um, prior to the reservations? Uh, Zachary Smith says, how many tofers for the Motor Manor Circus Circus? One, zero, half tofer. I don't, like, whatever the low, my lowest score is one tofer. I don't have an animation that has a half tofer, so it's a one tofer hotel. Uh, Justin asks if I'm a fan of the Office TV show. I sure am. I love the Office. I love the British version and the American version. Uh, Uniplex is a great topic for live stream. I am glad you enjoyed it, so thank you. Tom says, have you ever booked a hotel day rate? I've never booked a hotel day rate. Um, you know, but I feel like something I might want to do at some point in time, this will probably be, you know, uh, and, and how do I make this family friendly, but, uh, Japan love hotels, I think would be an interesting set of hotels to review. And when Electric Rick is looking for round beds, you know, that's a place where you do that. Uh, Chris Broad from Abroad in Japan, he's done a series on like the love hotels in Japan that just, uh, those those are um, just interesting rooms to say uh, the least. Brett says, uh, better booking direct or through an aggregator site, always direct uh, if I can. You know, particularly if it's a place I speak the language. The only time I book through aggregator sites going to Japan, I'll book through uh, Rakuten or Agoda, um, but most of the time I'll book direct with the hotels. Point Traveler says, are you interested in filming any train reviews? Uh, I've done some, some like Japan train reviews. Um, maybe they're more like how to ride rather than actually reviewing the train. Uh, Yoshi says, do you like Marriott or Hyatt? Yes, I like both. I'm a lifetime titanium with Marriott, so I've stayed over a thousand nights at Marriott's. I've stayed hundreds of nights with Hyatt's. When I have high-level Hyatt status, I like Hyatt's better, but there aren't enough Hyatt's compared to Marriott's. There's Marriott's everywhere. Uh, Max says, uh, Chris, your recommendation uh, for me, barbecue and Waikiki is outstanding, and <laughs> the owner is a real-life version of the Soup Nazi. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Max. Um... Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, as usual, I give away a Yellow Productions sh crew shirt on the live stream if you can answer one of my questions correctly. And so my question for you is uh, when we stayed at the Shade Hotel in Redondo Beach that we did a video of a couple months ago, but I also mentioned it in this stream, I really enjoyed the bed. Who was the bed made by? If you can mention the manufacturer of the bed from the Shade Hotel in Redondo Beach that we really liked, then you will win a Yellow Productions Crew shirt shipped to you anywhere in the world. Now, if you don't get to win one and you want to pick one up yourself, you can head over to shop.yellow-productions.com, pick up a shirt, pick up a duffel bag. All the purchases go to support the Yellow Productions channel so we can make better content for you. And if you're wondering, Chris, when is the next live stream? It's not going to be next week. It's probably two weeks from now, um, but if you want to know the time and the date and the topic, head over to update.yellow-productions.com and sign up for our mailing list, and every time we set up a live stream, you will get an email to know what the topic is and when it is going to be. Uh, all right, I see some answers in the chat, so let's go ahead and see who the first person to win was. And now we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, 
I see three right answers, at least when I checked, there might be more now. But Windy City Elevators, congratulations. You were the first person to say Tempurpedic. All right, well done. That's a hard one to spell too, um, but uh, it was in that review and I did mention it right here. So Windy City Elevators, send me an email to chris at yellow-productions.com. Let me know your size, your address, and I will get that Yellow Productions crew shirt heading over to you right away. Well, fellow explorers, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm going to see you in the next video. In the next live stream, you'll see that two weeks from now. But good for you. Next week, I'll put out two recorded videos, one on the usual live stream day, just because you'll be missing that one video. All right. See you later.